Good morning. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata. With me are Anuj and Sonia. Well, what do we have here over the last, uh, actually, several days? Uh, a very ranged Nifty. It's between 11,900 and 12,050. You're not able to make much of a break. But I guess the pain is more in the mid caps. And uh, that pain may not go away today. Today, there is fresh reason there, uh, for uh, the bulls to be a little worried. The global dollar rise. It's not a great deal, but it was at 96.5 before the US uh, G, uh, inflation numbers came in. After that, it's moved towards 97, and that's usually a little bit of a negative for emerging markets. So global dollar recovery is one uh, area of worry, even for the nifty bulls. But on the mid-caps, uh, there are more and more companies that are getting downgraded, uh, 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 more defaults happening, and the big NBFC was uh, big companies which can affect the entire market continue. Uh, the macro data that came in IIP and CPI, well, I'll come to that in a bit, but uh, it's really more of the same. There isn't anything in that data <clears throat> that can help the Nifty break out of the ranges or help the mid caps get any extra sucker. So it's just one of those also ran data. Oh, absolutely. Lata, hi, morning. Anuj, morning. Uh, we missed you yesterday, <laughs> but uh, in the market, you know, there were plenty of reasons to be concerned about. For one, of course, the market ended in the red after three days. There was major selling coming in from FII, so more than 1,050 crores of selling in the cash market. Uh, and there is this global growth scare, right? I mean, you heard comments from uh, Christine Lagarde, etc. Uh, that's caused a big drop in crude. So although it may be positive for us, but the overarching theme is that global growth scare and the impact it's having on demand. Um, yesterday, one would have expected to see big uh, delivery-based selling in a lot of the troubled names, mm -hmm. which came through. So Yes Bank saw about 200 crores, uh, 350 crores delivery selling in India bulls. But the other thing that also happened is there was delivery selling in blue chip names, the bluest of blue chip names as well whether it's, you know, HDFC Bank, HDFC, 300, 250 crores over there. So that really is the uh, problem, the, uh, the worrying point for our market. Uh, Anuj, morning, you were telling us yesterday that, you know, expect to see 1,000 crores of selling by FIIs, and that's actually come through. Um, how do you approach today? Would you be a bit cautious now? Uh, look, Sonia, good morning. Uh, you have to divide this now from a trading mindset and from the investment uh, picture as well. I think yesterday was a mirror image or reverse image of Tuesday. Uh, on Tuesday, the market rallied through the day and then fell in last hour from very crucial resistance. Yesterday, the market fell through through the day and recovered from a very crucial uh, support point uh, uh, yesterday. So essentially, this is a market which is respecting those who are respecting risk reward. Uh, it's a range market. You know, we're talking about trading the boundaries. This is trading the boundaries. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to follow. You don't have to chase the market. You have to do the reverse of, uh, you know, the, the uh, that day's trend. Mm. If those boundaries are getting respected, so uh, essentially 11,850 to 12,000 range. Now, of course, this does not mean that it will be. Dot at 11,850 or dot 12,000, give or take 20, 30 points. I think that's something that you have to map the screen and you know you you trade it. Uh, the Nifty Bank could be very crucial today because its low yesterday was 30,900. The current 20-day moving average is 30,800. Today's weekly options expiry as mm -hmm. well, so. I don't know, perhaps if there's any kind of bounce which which happens uh, today. Uh, okay, that's just for today, right? Yeah. But as we were talking about the last few days, yeah. something's got to give in this market. Yes. Uh, do you get a sense that the in the near term, there's a bigger correction underway? Look, I have to stick my neck out. I think uh, we, we may have made a bit of a near-term peak uh, for, for the market. Uh, uh, this hope rally that we spoke about, that at some point it will uh, run into resistance or some, some kind of reality check, uh, largely driven by FI inflows, that perhaps could be over, especially in the broader market. I don't know, there's a case of a pre-budget correction rather than a pre-budget rally because everyone believes that there's always going to be pre-budget rally. Mm -hmm. this, this time, could it be a case of a pre-budget correction first and then post-budget rally. I think that's uh, one one issue which is opening up. Uh, but for me, the market breadth is the most important thing. It's just deteriorating again and again. Yesterday also was quite weak. And this market went through a period where you, it forgave you for, you know, buying poor quality stocks. It's not going to do that now. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at what's happened to ADAG. Mm -hmm. Look at what's happened to a stock like Gen Irrigation. You look at what's happening to a stock like Suzlon. And if mm -hmm. you are one of those who gets into any of these with some kind of hope trade or some kind of news or whatever you are you know you're only going to blame yourself uh, mm -hmm. after that uh, you know after you lose money 
trading in these stocks or investing in these stocks. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, last time we thought AQR and uh, uh, NPAs and we are done. Yeah. And then we thought ILNFS and we are done. Then we thought Z and we are done. Then we thought JET and we are done. Then we thought DHFL and we are <laughs> uh -huh. done. I mean, now it is Suzlon, now it is probably some of the uh, ADAG stocks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the number is not, uh, the hope that we are, uh, okay, this is the last is not is getting belied so there are more and more there is definitely more and more mid cap pain absolutely and we've seen that in the last few days but Lata uh, you know on this capital goods number I mean it seems to be looking very good but would you not give it too much importance purely because it's lumpy in nature yeah that that's an obvious problem with uh, uh, capital goods I think for the past five six months it has been negative mm -hmm. so one positive number could always come and the base also is extremely adverse in capital goods and therefore a positive uh, uptick uh, you know, it's just that it is difficult to believe growth because other anecdotal evidence is not giving us the feeling that there is a lot of uh, growth. Mm. The way people are talking, um, captains of industry are talking, the way auto sales and other consumer goods are coming in, you're not very sure even if this one-off number is positive. Mm. The bigger number is usually CPI because the RBI uh, you know, uses that as an indicator. There it's positive that it is only 3.05 and core CPI. This is the Indian inflation mm. because it you take out food and fuel fuel. Now fuel, we don't set it, it's set by either the government or uh, OPEC countries. Mm -hmm. So if you take them out, then you have services, which is your medical services, education services, recreation services. That is core India. You can't import it and bring down those prices. No, you can't import tuitions and stuff like that. That has fallen to 4.2. That's a positive and somebody should, uh, uh, you know, uh, Neil Kant has gone on, to, uh, of say, uh, Credit Suisse has gone on to say that the way it's moved, he would expect a 200 basis point cut over the next one year. Mm. It's very difficult to agree to that much. But clearly, because of the core CPI falling to 4.2, the bond markets will be a little cheered. And of course, they have crewed mm. uh, to add to their cheer. But I just want to point out, since we are in the broad discussion of data problems, this CPI, WPI data is very confusing. You know, you, you have to look at the, just look at the consumer price infl uh, inflation. Urban food inflation is up 5.87. Rural food inflation is down 0 0.2. Yeah. And this is the third month in a row that there is this, un I mean, absolutely big divergence between food prices in the urban areas and food prices in rural areas. And as if this is not enough, there is an even bigger divergence between CPI food and WPI food. WPI food is 7.5% up. CPI food is 1.8, but that is more because rural is like down in the dumps. So what is inflation? Yeah. Where are we headed? The data confusion is so much that it will take a very brave man to go on cutting rates. Mm. You just want to get some data stability before. So let me just put that doubt also on the table. Okay, well, several doubts uh, <laughs> that we start the day with, right? But for now, the SGX Nifty is indicating that the start will definitely be in the red, down almost about 30-odd points. Doesn't look like it's going to be a good start for the bulls. Let's take a look at what our wise experts have to say as we head into trade this morning. Uh, Mahesh Nandurkar of CLSA says the success in raising GST compliance could lead to a durable period of 20% GST tax growth, similar to the jump seen in income taxes post the demonetization move. This potential growth increase may help the government lower the GST rate on cement and two-wheelers in due course of time. Higher compliance will be beneficial for the industry with its higher share of the unorganized segments such as appliances, building, materials, jewelry and paints. Some near-term supply chain disruption impacting growth cannot be ruled out. Okay, let's hope. Of course, that's why we had GST uh, in the first place. Now for the money markets. Uh, Mohan Chinoy of Kotak Mahindra Bank says moderating Brent crude price and custodial and other inflows are positive for the rupee. On the other hand, trade war and resultant global growth concerns are rupee negative. Rupee is thus boxed in a tight range, expected trading range for the day, 69.25 to 69.55. We don't have to bother about this asset class for now. Okay, well, on the bonds, Mohan Chinoy says CPI inflation for May inched up marginally to 3.05%, while core inflation has moderated. IIP grew at 3.4%, which was higher than market expectations, and Brent crude has softened to $60 a barrel, and systemic liquidity remains in surplus. All this is bond positive. Expect trading range for the 10-year is 697 to 7.03% today. Okay, let's talk about the global queues. Uh, here's Mangalam with the world view. 
Well, there was a second day of decline on Wall Street, so we had the Dow close just above that 26,000 mark, lower by about two-tenths of a percent. It was the Nasdaq which underperformed with a cut of almost half a percent, and that was primarily on account of tech stocks which led the decline. Facebook, for instance, was lower by about two percent as there were reports that uh, of emails that linked Zuckerberg to the company's privacy practices, so that weighed down on the stock. Other than that, we had all the uh, uh, chip stocks also lower, the likes of Vanek Vectors and Lean Research. LAMB research that was primarily on account of analysts' belief that this sector will see recovery only in the second half of 2020. The street was worried about the three T's, Trump, trade and tariff, uh, as well as Treasury. So Treasury yields declined as a result of which we saw the banking stocks decline as well. Across the Atlantic, uh, we saw the European markets decline on uh, trade fears. Remember the previous trading session when the Wall Street ended at the low point of the day, the European, European markets closed at the high point of the day. So there was some catch up out there. BAT, the British American tobacco stock, was lower by 4% as global cigarette sales declined. We'll keep an eye out on developments regarding Brexit as sterling is near a three-week high. Asia is largely lower. Crude is lower as well owing to higher supply, lower demand concerns and the SGX Nifty indicating a muted start. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for all that. Uh, uh, fewer people are smoking or fewer people are smoking fewer cigarettes. That's a positive <laughs> even if it's negative from a stock investor point. Okay, we'll stay with the global headlines actually. Mario Draghi, President of the European Central Bank and Christine Lagarde, Managing Director IMF, uh, have warned that the trade dispute between the US and China as well as a threatened dispute with Europe now, you know, the uh, Trump's angry words at the German uh, funding of the oil uh, pipeline uh, and, and his anger with other industrial nations is likely to cause a headwind for the entire global economy. Listening to this, what looks like a slightly dire warning. We meet at a moment when support for global cooperation and multilateral solutions is waning. Global growth has been subdued for more than six years and the largest economies in the world are putting up or threatening to put up new trade barriers. And this might be the beginning of something else which might affect us uh, in a more broad way. So these tr troubling developments will create headwinds for all. Global trade has faced headwinds in recent years as trade restrictive measures have outpaced liberalizing ones. Okay, the pain because of the trade tussle is something that could continue through the course of the calendar year. At least that's the consensus view coming in from a lot of market experts as well as uh, 